Hello, praise God. Today is Friday and I'm so, so excited and glad to be bringing God's truth to you. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Listen, miracles are already taking place. And today is a day of miracle. Praise God. And I thank you for joining us in our yesterday's meeting. And I pray that what you have received will keep manifesting every day of your life. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Can we call for that daily bread? Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. So now, I was teaching yesterday about how you see. Now remember, we're reading the scripture, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18. It says, by having, the, by having the eyes of your heart flooded with light. He's praying for you. And the same prayer I'm praying for you. That the eyes of your heart will be flooded with light. So I was talking to you yesterday about finances, how some of God's children, because of the darkness in their heart, cannot see that God can actually take care of them. They can't see. Now, he said, I don't get. What do you mean? How can you say God can bless me without me having a job or without me doing a business or without me? How, how can you say, how can I, can I, can I, you mean, can I live my life that way? Yes. I'm talking about the wisdom of God and the ability of God. You see, we need to come to terms with this truth first of all. And then we, knowing this, then we begin to redefine the jobs we do. The concept and the heart of a billionaire's child going to school is quite different from the concept and the heart of a poor man's child. Now, you see these things happen around you. So you go around the poor, the average people, parents and children with parents like that. And say, what do you want to be in life? Oh, I want to be a doctor. I want to be a lawyer. I want to be, why do you want to be? Because, I mean, I want so that I can get a good job and then they'll pay me very well and I can take care of my life, take care of my parents. Okay, fine. And then you, you go to the children of the rich who, I mean, and they say, what do you want to study in school? Oh, I want to study philosophy. Say, why do you want to study philosophy? Yeah, so that I can help, you know, assist in the mentalism. Who, who wants to go to? <laughs> you say, oh, 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 I want to study psychology. Oh, I want to study anthropology. Well, what, what are you studying anthropology for? Oh, because I, I want to. Um, I want to do this. Well, I want to study archaeology. And then, what do you mean archaeology? I mean, no, I'm fascinated by the kind of discoveries they make. I want to be traveling and going to this on earth, all those kind of stuff. Like, you're, you're wondering. You know what you say to those people? You say, it's not your problem. It's not your fault. You're not hungry. <laughs> yeah, see, the concept is different. Now, that's why I'm teaching you these things I'm teaching you. Because as long as you're driven by money, you will not fulfill purpose. So you need to come to the place of understanding first of the ability of your father working in you. And that can only happen when the eyes of your mind is with the right lights. Let me show you something. So you know that I'm not making this up. Psalm 127. I want you to watch this now. I'm reading from the Amplified Version. Now it says, except, I want you to take note of those words, except the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain who builds it. Except the Lord who keeps the city, the watchmen wake but in vain. It is, now look at verse 2 and that's where we're going to. It is vain. Take note of that word. It is vain for you to rise up early, to take rest late, to eat the bread of anxious toy. For he gives blessings to his beloved in sleep. 
it is vain for you to rise up early and sleep late. Why? Because you want to earn a salary. You want to earn a profit. That's what he called. That's what he called the bread of anxious toy. The food you get from your labor. He says it is vain for you to wake up early. Say, man, I'm going to walk. And, and, and then you go to work. And at the end of the day, they pay you some money. And they say, ah, thank God, I have money now. He says it is vain. Why did he say it is vain? Because... Your father, who is God, gives blessings, which are these things. He gives them to his beloved in their sleep. Now, what does it mean in their sleep? In their dream? No. He means even if they don't do anything, your father, because they are his beloved, takes care of them. So now... I know I am not really poor. I know I am not broke. I am not. Why? Because I have a father who loves me and he takes care of me. He takes care of me whether I have a job or whether I don't have a job. He takes care of me. So why do I work? Oh, because I need to earn salary. Why do you need to earn a salary? Eh? I have bills to pay. No, wrong, wrong. Are you getting this? Are you getting it? Now, I'm trying to get the real light to come into you. That's why I read the scripture to you. Look at it there. He gives blessing to his beloved in sleep. He gives blessings. Let that sink in your mind. He gives blessings to... Now, sometimes you read things like this and you wake up and feel, man, I've been cheated all my life. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. You you want to you want to wake up one day and feel like the the elder brother of that prodigal son you know you know the story and 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 he he saw the father throwing a party for this guy who's collected his wealth gone to squ squander it finished it became broke comes back home and daddy is calling for celebration and killing the father's cow and he said dad this is not fair i've been your loyal son in this house and and i've been doing all the work never have you said go take that animal and enjoy with your friends never but this fool came back home squandered everything and i i know you still give him new new wealth How would you feel waking up one day and realizing all the things you have worked for in life is zero, is vain, you didn't need to? Oh, I, I, I'm saving this money because I want to build, I want to build that big house. I'm listen, 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 let me just tell you this truth today. And whether you believe it or not, as long as you will grow in Christ, as long as you will grow in the things of the Spirit, as long as you will grow in the place of truth, you are going to meet this end. What is the end? Everything you have labored for will be taken away from you. Everyone. If you have labored to build a house, it will be, that house will be taken away from you. If you have labored to everything you've labored for, you see my sweat. See my sweat. You know, one day you just stand, you know, in front of that house and say, see my sweat. And God says, oh, your sweat. Son, give out that house. Huh? No. <laughs> no. You see, now you are in the same position as Job. Job, Job had lived a perfect life. <laughs> see because you don't understand that's why you don't even understand what happened to Job you know someone said no Job spoiled everything because of his mouth he said the thing that I feared most have come upon me so that was what happened to Job that was not what happened to Job if that was Job's problem he wouldn't have been welled in the first place if Job had a bad mouth he wouldn't have been welled in the first place blessed by God nah that was Satan's confession. Said you have blessed him, and Satan, Satan was saying exactly what it was. So, Job had walked all this walk, because he says, 
you have blessed the work of his hands. So Job was toiling and was doing all the stuff, rising in wealth and, and doing good. I wanted to get it. And he became so wealthy, became the richest man. I believe the richest man in his world then. And he loved God. He served God. The law of God was in his heart. I'm sure Job was a tither. I'm sure Job was a giver. I knew, I know Job was that. Because that's how he grew. But all these, as wonderful as they are, must be brought into God's light. And so one day God said to Job, Job, I'm telling you the truth. I want you to give out everything you have. Oh. You, you see, the same way Jesus met that rich young ruler. Because the Bible said Job was a perfect man. And because he was perfect, God wanted to bring him into real perfection with every physical thing around him. So, Job, yes sir, give out what you, everything you are, every, everything, everything. <laughs> no, I can't. No, I can't. <laughs> mm. But he qualified for the blessing of God, which is true riches. But he couldn't submit to the process. So what did God do? Now, because he ended by his life and his relationship with God, because he ended, God would have been unrighteous not to bless Job with true riches. So what did God do? I know what to do. Satan, come here. Have you considered my... What do you think God will expect Satan to consider Job for? So when God asked the devil that question, he knew exactly where he was driving Satan's mind. Satan said, ah... Touch, put your hand and touch what he has and see if he will not cause it. God said, take it. Now, when did Job, Job begin to confess that fear? It was after God had asked him to give out everything he had. So now he began to think of it and say, so I'm going to become broke again? No, no, I'm not going to get broke. No, I refuse to be broke. Ah, Now, all this he was saying because of the word of God that came to his heart. I'm going to be poor. Yeah, no, no. Now, he, he could have just gone before the Lord and said, Lord, explain to me. How do you, what do you want to do? And God would have explained to just like the rich young ruler. He, he would have gone to Jesus and said, how will that work? And Jesus would have explained to him. You remember after he left, Jesus said, there is no man who has left father, mother, house, land that will not receive in this life a hundredfold and in the life to come, life eternal. Do you see that now? So it was in the heart of Jesus when Jesus told him, go sell everything you have, give to the poor, come follow me. Jesus was not going to make him poor. Jesus was actually going to make him richer. But with a different kind of riches. So God said, Satan, you have Job. Take it. And Satan cleared everything from Job. And at the end of the day, God visited Job again. Now, this was because Job qualified for that blessing. And God was being righteous to see to it that Job gets it. So the Bible says Job became twice as rich as he was. Now, in, short, in a short time, not the same time he gathered all what he had before. This time around, everything came by the blessing of God. They didn't come by Job's labor. The Bible says everyone that ever knew Job came to visit him and every one of them came with substance. True riches. Because God wants you to look at everything. He, he, he doesn't like it when you stand and say, see the worker, see this house, I built this, and this was my retired benefits when after I left from working for the government or for that, that, that uh, uh, company, this was my retired benefit. I used to build this house. Oh, see the work of my hand. It irritates God. Why? So that no flesh should boast in his presence. 
That's the wisdom behind it. No flesh should boast in his presence. Now, what am I showing to you? His light. This is how God sees. And if you bring yourself to the place of his light, now it begins to redefine your actions. It begins to redefine your decisions. It begins to redefine the things that you do. So now you find yourself that, I mean, whatever I do, I want to confirm from the Lord before I do it. Because if I'm going to build a house, it's the Lord that's going to build that house. Except the Lord tells me to build that house. I'll be building that house in vain, even though I've saved up money to build that house. Why? Because by the time I'm done building that house, I will not need that house anymore. See that now? <sighs> Time is up. Praise God. Ah, I'm, I'm going to continue on this next week. So don't miss it. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be flooded with lights. I'm telling you, it will help your decision making. It will help you live a better life. It will help you live a healthy life, free of worries, free of troubles. I'm telling you the truth. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let, let, let this light be open to us. And everyone that is watching me right now, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise God. Have the best weekend ever. I love you very much. Bye.